For this project we need pallet wood, protective equipments like face mask, glasses, gloves, sanding tool, hammer, measuring tape, nails, handsaw or chop saw, knife, pliers, pencil and paint of your choice. For the electronics bit we need a Arduino Nano, a servo motor, a 18650 battery or a 5 volt DC buck step down module, battery protection board, a SPDT switch, a generic PCB and general soldering equipments. Let's start the project by sanding the planks to give them a nice and smooth texture. Next, using a chop saw, I'm cutting the two sides, bottom and the top section of the clock. Once all the sides are ready, it's time for me to join them all together. At first, I just used nails, but soon I realized it was not a good idea to have just nails to hold the sides. So I went ahead and added screws to give the sides an additional support. Using an edge decorative stick, I'm preparing the roof of the clock. From its invention in 1656 until 1930s, the pendulum clock was the world's most precise timekeeper. Using some of the leftover wooden blocks from my last project, I'm preparing the base of the clock. To fill in the gaps, I'm adding a bit of POP to the grooves. However, as we all know, two dissimilar material like wood and plaster expand and contract at different rates. For any sort of permanence, you need to isolate the movement of each related to the other. However, this clock is not going to move a lot and will not be placed outside the house. So adding a bit of POP would not really matter as long as I seal it properly. I'm preparing the dial of the clock using a board extracted from a broken chest's drawer. My plan is to have a dark colored dial and a light color housing for it. So I'm painting the dial black. Now for the numbering bit, I'm using a printed sheet as a stencil to transfer the numbers from the sheet over to the circular board. Once all the numbers are transferred, I'm painting the graphite impressions with white color. If you are too lazy, you can just print it out from your computer. After giving the finishing touch, I'm drilling a hole in the center of the circle and placing a $2 watch circuitry, which I bought from AliExpress. Now from the same compressed wood board, I'm extracting another circle which will be used for the pendulum of the clock. This is how I have created the pendulum's circuit. Connect the servo to any one of the digital pins of the Arduino. Then connect the negative to ground and positive to the 5V output of the Arduino. Finally, connect the negative wire of the battery to the ground and positive to the V-in of Arduino, placing the switch in the middle of the circuit. This circuit diagram is for the pendulum only. The code is very simple. Start by including the servo.h library, then declare the servo pin and then create an object of the servo class. In the setup section, attach the servo to the Arduino's pin. And finally, in the loop section, we just need to move the servo left and right. I'll start by sorting the Arduino to the circuit plate. Then I'm connecting the servo to the digital pin D2 and the negative to ground and positive to the 5 volt output of Arduino. After that, I'm connecting all the cables to the BMC and finally soldering it to the main circuit board.
Now that we have the circuit ready, it's time to hot glue the battery to the back of the clock. Then solder the circuit to the battery. Instead of using a battery, you can connect a step down converter here. A quick note, AVR are made for low power applications as low as 0.7 volt. The nanos at greater than 5 volt will work a little slower. Analog pins will be glitchy and 5 volt and 3.3 volt regulators will provide a lower voltage. Next I'm painting the body of the clock. I chose off-white color for the body of my clock as my dial is black in color. I created the back plate from the remaining cardboard bit and screwed it to the back of the clock. Almost done. To conclude the tutorial, I'm hot gluing the pendulum to the servo motor and then sliding the clock face to hide the circuitry behind it. That's it. All done. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.